Yes. So, always remembering to use the space of unclutching throughout the day in anything that you do. Ultimately, the space, when it gets bolted inside of your inner space, even when you perform your daily actions, you will be uh, established in that space, the state of Paramashiva, the space of Paramashivoham. So, yes, so if you have any questions, feel free to drop it in the comments below. I read the comments and um, I'll share clicks, insights, powerful cognitions I got from Swamiji uh, that he reveals with all of us uh, on a daily basis in the live uh, daily discourse, the live satsang. So, one thing I wanted um, to share. Swamiji recently, last few days, he's been expanding on this, uh, this new terminology, which is pious, fraud. Um, meaning that it is a... This is the best way to describe SDHD. So for those who are not familiar with this acronym, SDHD means self-doubt, self-hatred, self-denial. So these three are directly responsible for us not living in the space of uh, Paramashivoham. So in the spiritual uh, dimension of our life, in the path towards seeking, towards experiencing the space of Paramashivoham, experiencing oneness with the Guru, uh, we face different forms of self-doubts, self-hatreds and self-denial. And the best way to identify, to label this STHD, Somji says, is pious fraud. It presents itself to you in a very pious way, in a way, a very humble way, a way which seduces you, which puts you into some kind of a, a trance. And, but if you really look into the nature of these thought currents, um, of this H SDHD, it is very much fraudulent in the way that it stops you from remembering that you are Paramashiva. It goes against the truth of Paramashivoham. So the first thing I wanted to do in this session is reminding each one of us that we are Paramashiva. Swamiji has initiated us into the Mahavakya Om Nityananda Paramashivoham. It plays in the background, you can hear it. If you want to find this Mahavakya, you can check on YouTube. The link is in the description of this video. Nit uh, Kailas and Nityanda Media House in Kailash, the YouTube channel where you can find this Mahavakya. You just type Mahavakya, like the way that I wrote it in the description. You can find that video. And you can use this Mahavakya to bring yourself back to the space of unclutching, to the space um, of meditation, space of oneness with Swamiji, with Paramashiva, with Guru. So, uh, yes, first things first, one click I had recently is that every time you engage with people, you should always engage from the context of enriching them and raising them and reminding them that they are Paramashiva. They are the uh, causeless auspiciousness, the ultimate causeless, auspiciousness, superconsciousness, and that they can manifest whatever they want in their life because this whole manifested universe is manifested from the space, from the consciousness, and you are that consciousness. So remembering that is very much liberating, especially when we face situations where we are not manifesting the reality we want for ourselves, or we, fa we face forms of suffocations, powerlessness in our life. So yes, so feel free. Don't forget this is an open live question and answer session. So feel free to drop a comment. Uh, I have, I can read them right away and answer them uh, with whatever clicks and cognitions I have regarding uh, this, whatever I the cognitive shifts I had since I've been with Swamiji, since I've been initiated by uh, Swamiji into, I don't know, maybe thousands of powerful cognitions. Swamiji is like a powerful cognition creating machine. 
every day he comes and shares the same ultimate truth in a new way and gives us these powerful cognitions so that we can root ourselves uh, into the space of Paramashivoham. So always be aware in your day-to-day -day life, start to sincerely look into where are you a pious fraud? Where are you forgetting that you are the ultimate Paramashiva? You are the consciousness from which anything can manifest. So you can actually modify your life, you can change your life um, from that cognition. Today Swamiji talked about a very interesting thing. He talked about the three levels of reality. You have the, the objective reality, which is the, the, the material world. This is how it clicked with me. The material world is the objective reality. The subjective reality is how you experience the world. And then you have the cognitive reality, which is the cognitions that you cherish. These cognitions are directly and entirely responsible for the perceptions you have and for the experience you have of the objective world and the, uh, what you manifest in your objective world. And one of the main clicks I got was, it is so important to remember that everything starts with cognitions. And that is why Swamiji is, is working 20 hours a day in so many ways, especially in reviving Kailasa, the enlightened ecosystem, to create an environment which helps those who really seek to experience the ultimate to remember that everything starts from the cognitions you cherish about you. If you remember the initiation into the Mahavakya of Om Nityananda Paramashivoham, that you are that ultimate Paramashiva, that super consciousness, which is the source of everything. If you remember that, then you can change your, your perceptions and your objective reality. Yesterday I was talking about manifesting your reality and how I was contemplating on that because Swamiji has put so much emphasis on manifest your reality, the science of manifesting your reality, the Kalpaturu science. And, and it makes total sense. Um, when today I was, I was uh, doing Varkata Sadas with other Sangha members and we were, I was sharing one of the clicks that I had, which was maybe not everybody. I personally feel everybody to, to a certain level, but you know, some people, they might not feel like that. But in general, we are not necessarily happy about the life we live. But the thing is that we grew up in such a way because we were not taught these powerful cognitions and we were not taught these powerful truths, we kind of feel bound by the existing infrastructure and structure of the way the society functions and we are kind of okay with it uh, and at some point you're, we are no longer okay with it. But the thing is that we don't feel powerful about it. By that I mean like we don't feel like I can manifest the life I want for myself. I need food, you need money to have food, so I need to get job. That's not necessarily how you would do things if such an infrastructure was not there. Maybe some of us would, maybe some of us, some of us would not, but that's not necessarily how each one of us would do it. And what I realized is that it's so important for you to start to look into deep into yourself and see how do you actually visualize a good life? How do you actually visualize living your like a powerful life? And yes, Nityanandam, again, it's an open chat. So if you uh, have any questions, drop it in the comments. This is an open Q&A session I'm sharing right now. But if you have any questions about what I'm sharing or any other question, write it in the comments. I'll read and share. And uh, yes, Nityandam, to each one of us, each one of you who are, uh, who are here on this live Q&A session. So, yes, we have a question actually. 
Can you please explain how to stop grieving for loved ones who have left their bodies and attachment to others? A very good question. Let us for a moment come back to the space of unclutching. Connecting with Paramashiva, with Swamiji, with Guru in oneness. Yes. Always remember throughout the day, always remember to unclutch, unclutch, unclutch. It is very important for us to come back to actually solidify the experience of consciousness within our own body. So, yes, grieving for others, for loved ones especially. One of the main click I got from what Swamiji shared and uh, initiated us into was Again, as I was speaking, it's at the cognitive level. So that's what Swamiji shared today. That's how it clicked with me. Everything happens at the cognitive level. Actually, Swamiji says the cognitive reality is the only reality in which you have the freedom to consciously create what you want. You cannot consciously work in the perceptive, in the percep uh, subjective reality. And you cannot consciously create in the objective reality. You can only consciously create in the cognitive reality. And when you create in the cognitive reality, then the subjective and objective reality change. So, one of the big shifts I had was that start to look at yourself and others as a being, a soul who came to fulfill a certain karma, a certain purpose, a certain desire, unfulfilled desire. We are not, see what Swamiji was sharing, that when we come out of the body of the mother, the moment the air touches the skin, ignorance happens. This is the moment where um, you lose, the, you forget the purpose for which you decided to assume the body. So that was a very important Understanding that Swamiji shared, which really uh, enriched me a lot. And because we forget why we came, and we are not taught the science of how to remember, how to come back to the space of completion and remember the purpose for which we came, we start to live life and go left and right and create a mess for ourselves. So when, when I started, when Swamiji was sharing uh, about a being who came down to experience certain things, some people who want to experience pleasures of food, some people want to experience name and fame, some people want to experience relationships, some people, there's various reasons why a being would want to decide, decide to incarnate himself in the human body here. But one thing that clicked with me was like, because we do not fully remember the purpose for which we came, we also do not know why the being in front of us, the person, the being in front of us came. We don't know 100%. Maybe some ideas. Sometimes it's complete delusion. We have no clue. We think we know, but we don't know. Sometimes we know a little bit and that might be uh, to a certain extent true. There's all spectrums of possibilities. But when you remember the being came to fulfill something, I feel it creates a very a nice unclutching space between the way you relate with other people. Um, and I feel that this unclutching space is very important in order to have healthy relationships. And when we forget that, um, we get that I mean we get attached we are already by default attached because of the various desires we have so by default we have the tendency to cling on things but we will be much more attached if we don't have this cognition I, fo I found that this cognition of cognizing people as a being and not as um, as a social bond like not mother father sister best friend classmate lover like all these titles that we have created i find that these are the main uh, culprits for the pain for the grief that we experience when something changes 
the cognition I uh, started to cherish and I started to realize is that every being holds a certain inner space and in that inner space that being wishes to manifest a certain reality to experience fulfillment. When I am cherishing a space, I will attract, I will get in touch or manifest different types of people around me. But these people, they are there only because their inner space is resonating with my inner space to a certain extent. It depends on various things, but to a certain extent, it resonates. And that is why we are kind of, we are deciding to engage with each other because actually, if you look at the rea if you look at things in a very like uh, without any uh, attachments or perceptions, like we don't need to engage. Like I don't have to do a live session. Like nobody is forcing me. I have my own inspiration, my own convictions, my own reasons, my own thought currents. Why you know I'm deciding to engage with life in this way but each one of us are doing that on a daily basis we have our own reasons and even the idea or the thought current that we are forced and we have to is actually not true you have to first accept this thought current for that thought current to become you and a very simple example are rebels right rebels they they, they don't accept of course some you know sometimes they become violent and all that uh, I don't want to expand on this but like rebels they don't want to accept the thought current that's why they develop this rebellious thought current so each thought current we have the entire freedom to decide to uh, tune with it or not tune with it so when we are with when I when I started to cognize that I started to realize that the beings which I'm engaging with right now are a reflection of my inner space. And when my inner space changes, these beings might come and go. The same beings might not be engaging with me anymore. And for me, actually, when I, when I click with that, it was like, that's actually a great thing. Because if, if that being is no longer uh, connecting or tuning with me at this point in time, that means that the inner space they're cherishing and the inner space that I'm cherishing is not the same. So if we were to be together, uh, that would not help us to manifest the reality that we want because we are cherishing different type of inner space. And also, when a being, like when, especially, okay, when here you're sharing about um, who have left their body. So when departed souls, when a being leaves the body, we might not, uh, until the last moment, we might not realize that we have this power to leave the body, uh, but we do. Swamji was talking about it, the power of manifesting death. And that power gets, if you are in the complete completion while in the body, then you can manifest it consciously. Otherwise, at the last minute, well, before death comes, you manifest this power. And um, when the being decides to manifest death, it's because that being feels that this load, this body and this muscle memory is no longer helping him to move forward in his purpose, in his purpose of manifesting something. So he decides to assume another body with a new muscle memory. Bio memory follows, Swamji was sharing. The bio memory follows us from life, from life to life. That is why it's so important to break patterns because when you break patterns, uh, you don't carry them in the next life. But, uh, but the muscle memory is left uh, with the body. So when you leave the body, the muscle memory stays here and you move to the next life. So um, I, I, f I really find that seeing this as like respecting the will of the individual. And just like, okay, that being felt that time is over. Now it's time to take another body to continue uh, towards the path of enlightenment. And uh, for me, this cognition really brings a lot of peace, a lot of, set a lot of settledness, a lot of uh, completion and bliss. And it makes life, I find, very, uh, very 
serene and beautiful so so it's all about cognitive shifts now this cognition might resonate with you it might not fully resonate with you but one thing that is for sure is that for any uh, situation we face and we don't enjoy changing the cognition is the only way to go so you have to um, in, sit with yourself look into yourself sincerely and see how are you what are you cognizing what are you cognizing about yourself about life right now and changing that of course you know listening to Swamji's words is very important again the Nityanda Media House YouTube channel in the description I will, we, there's uh, many many short videos of Swamji satsangs there so you can have a quick five minute uh, glimpse of Swamiji's uh, initiations and powerful cognitions but it's very important to receive this knowledge at first because uh, it helps us to have a cognitive shift even here that's why uh, I'm also doing these sessions is to share my cognitions uh, with all of you and uh, hoping to help you for you to have a cognitive shift also so that you can uh, be more fulfilled manifest the reality that you want more and more in the objective reality so and and um, and yeah and be fulfilled manifest what you want because that's a purpose enriching is very important empowering others is very important sharing the truth of Paramashivam is very important again should not remain established in the pious fraud we should constantly remind ourselves and others that we are Paramashiva we are that super consciousness which is the source of everything that we experience so if we are that that means that we have the power to change everything that we experience so then we just need to tune into that more and more and realize that and change what we wish to change so yes if that clicks with you you can give a thumbs up otherwise you can ask more questions something else we have another question here um, question about unclutching how does 25 to 30 minutes of unclutching is enough when we have heard stories of yogis who have meditated for years very good question so let us first get into the space of unclutching for a few moments we'll listen to Swamiji 40 seconds Decide to unclutch, not to follow any thoughts, emotions, triggering of mind and mental activities inside. Even laziness is a mental activity, tiredness is mental activity, feeling bored is mental activity. Do not follow any of that, just decide not to follow any mental activity and sit as you, the pure space. Yes. So, space of unclutching. Also, if we start enjoying unclutching, would we lose interest in engaging with the world? Yes, so these questions are hand in hand and they're very good. On the other side, um, just to finalize with the previous question, after knowing my mom's soul was liberated, I still am suffering and missing her and feeling empty. Do I just keep on clutching because powerful cognitions are not helping me? No. Uh, powerful cognitions are not helping me as a powerless cognition. Powerful, if uh, see one of the things that would click, which which clicked with me was like Swamiji was constantly um, reminding us to do Varkata Sadas. And in Varkata Sadas, what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to share our cognitions about whatever statement Swamiji made or told to do Varkata Sadas upon the topic. And what I realized is that truth is we don't re we don't really know what a cognition is. But by constantly trying to catch our cognitions, we start to discover what a what a cognition is. 
And that's one of the things which Varketa Salas does. It gives you a space where you can look into yourself and listen to others and catch what is powerful cognitions. Because initially, we don't see, we don't understand necessarily the difference. We cannot differentiate the difference between a thought and a cognition. A thought will never, will never help you in any way. So we need to start to look into and find by having keeping this seeking alive we start to experience uh, powerful cognitions so that's one thing so coming to the conclusion that powerful cognitions are not helping you that is the that is spiritual suicide because swamji was sharing today the only place where you have power is in the cognitive reality not in the subjective reality and not in the objective reality if you say cognitions are not helping you you're shutting yourself from the cognitive reality so then there's only subjective and objective reality left for you and in none of these realities you have power so that's very dangerous that's that's like it's like that's like cutting the umbilical cord so no on the other hand we should just be more patient and look into and chew on cognitions one of the cognitions which uh, I've been chewing since Swamji shared it and initiated me into that is the uh, responsibilism and Swamji says that we are responsible for everything that happens inside of us and outside of us now that's a huge thing it depends how you see it but that means a lot of things and naturally initially your mind is like what do you mean that doesn't make sense that's impossible right away you will have thousands of scenarios where you see where you just see the impossibility and the danger is after your mind bombards you with situations where you feel that what Swamji has just shared is impossible, you discard what Swamji has shared. And that is, that is, that is horrible, that is terrible. Um, because if you discard it, then there's no way you're going to realize it. So what Swamji was sharing in the Bhagavad Gita, I was reading a chapter a few days back, and Swamji was sharing that even if you don't understand what it means, chew on it, contemplate on it, unclutch, and in the process of unclutching, remember that and try to grasp what it like, try to grasp the reality of this cognition. And as you do that, you get it. The more you seek, the more you get what you seek for. So keeping the seeking alive is very important, especially when it comes to spiritual truth, because initially we might not grasp what it means. Many powerful cognitions Swamji shares, it's like way above what we are used to cognize. So it's like, it's very, uh, we can feel shaken and we, and we might feel like it's not, I'm not clicking or not connecting with it. And that's fine, but you should keep the uh, seeking alive. If Swamji said it, there's a reason why he said it. Because Swamji doesn't have any vested interest. He just wants to empower us. So if he shares something, then that means he came to the, to the decision that this information would be very valuable for us. So we should, um, we should sincerely contemplate on it and all that. And also in the same line, um, if we feel suffering when we miss people, um, again, we should remember, we are responsible for that experience. The suffering we experience inside of us, it is we are we are responsible for it so we can change it and if it is love if we feel that we are lacking love because some of the loved ones are missing one of the clicks i had was like then start to build a stronger feeling and love connection with swamiji with your guru engage in devotional activities where you cherish sacred sentiments and love for uh, the ultimate for Paramashiva, for Guru, oneness. Cherish love, consciously remember love. And when you do puja, you offer, you get into that space of gratitude, of love, and you offer, you offer. If you do this every day, sincerely, you will manifest love. Because again, everything manifests from consciousness. If you consciously decide, okay, I'm going to offer puja to Swamiji, and through this puja, I'm going to manifest a space of love. And you offer the puja, you constantly do that, you will manifest it. Swamji says, everything that you repeat in the space of time becomes a space. So if you constantly do that on a regular basis, that love dimension of you, the love thought current, the heart chakra will open and open. And the more it opens, the more love oozes out of it and fulfills you. 
So yes, it's true that sometimes just uh, I mean it depends of each one of us, but um, sometimes we can get the fulfillment through uh, a, an understanding, a clarity. Sometimes we get the fulfillment through uh, an emotional experience. So in both ways. Swamiji is fulfilling us because not only he's giving satsangs and sharing these powerful cognitions, but he's also uh, giving us an opportunity to experience the bhakti. When you live the words of the Guru, you develop love. When you do tyaga, you create love. Because to do tyaga, you need to have, you need to be really inspired. To, to do tyaga, for instance, of reducing the amount of food you consume per day or removing solid food from your life for a day. Today is actually Monday and Swamiji said on Mondays we should do dry fasting. For me it's the second time in my life I'm doing dry fasting today. And it's not that difficult first. But the second thing is like when you do these kinds of decisions, when you make these kinds of decisions, you need to be highly inspired. And if you hold on to that decision for it perhaps initially a short period of time, you build love. Swamiji says if you manifest tyaga you will create love if you have love you will manifest tyaga so one leads to another so yes i guess for relationships and attachments and, and feeling missing love and uh, attention and all that definitely devotional um, spiritual activities would uh, create would fulfill that uh, very much so that's what i would share yes coming back to uh, this question oh, we have a lot actually so we're, yeah let's do unclutching uh, yogis meditate for years how 30 minutes of unclutching is enough and uh, if we do unclutching will we lose interest to engage with the world so first thing is no Swamiji is saying we do not lose interest to engage with the world actually we engage with the world more intensely but perhaps your activities will change because maybe your interests will change. But that, that's, that's a different thing. But engaging with the world will not stop. If engaging with the world stops, that is, as Swamiji says, life negative. And it should not happen. You should always work to be life positive. Swamiji is not teaching us to withdraw from life. He's teaching us to have powerful cognitions and engage with life more and more and more. Now, maybe some things will change because... Um, some things that we experience in our life today is because of the powerlessness we cherish. If we remove this powerlessness from our life, then we will manifest a different reality. So some things might change, but uh, the activism and the engagement with life will be same. Um, now, yeah, the click I got regarding this 25, I don't know if stream is fine. Yeah, it is fine. Getting signal, some bandwidth reduction. But um, the click I got regarding this is that, see, yogis and sadhakas, they spend their, whole li their, their life to raise their frequencies. And at some point, when you raise your frequency to a certain level, you, you manifest your reality a lot more intensely and you manifest Guru. You manifest Diksha, initiation in your life. So uh, the click I got is like most of the tapas that we hear about is the tapas which is required to receive Diksha. But if you have received the Diksha, then that tapas is not necessary. Living the initiations becomes necessary. And Swamiji says, sit 30 minutes of unclutching a day because every time you sit and unclutch, initially you might be a little restless, but if you do that for a few days, you'll start to experience that space. And the more you experience that space, the more uh, that space becomes a solid experience for you and it gets bolted inside your inner space. And when that happens, you carry that space with you in other things that you do because actually unclutching is not about action. It's about engaging with your thoughts and your emotions. Whether thoughts or emotions are there, that is secondary. But unclutching means don't engage with it. Make a conscious decision, no matter what situation you're in, 
and align your lifetime energy, thoughts, words, and actions towards that. So that's the click I got. So it's not about uh, it's not about spending time. Of course, the more time you spend, the faster that experience solidifies. But we cannot compare. Uh, and plus, we are like truly blessed because Swamji is an avatar. And one of the characteristics of an avatar is that he can transmit experience just like that. Now, many of these yogis and sadhakas, they did not get experience. They are seeking experience and that is why they do this tapas, uh, they do these, 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 uh, these things. But Swamiji was sharing that actually many of the spiritual practices, a portion of it is useless. But until you get the experience, you do not have the capacity to distinguish what is useless and what is useful. But when you have an avatar who is there, and who has done the, the path and who has had experience with millions of people from different backgrounds, he knows what is necessary and what is not necessary and he's not going to waste your time with things which are not necessary. He's just going to focus and emphasize on the things which are necessary. So he says, build the space of unclutching and he says sit 30 minutes a day. In today's world, sitting 30 minutes a day is a huge thing. The mind we have today is such an active, crazy chimpanzee, monkey, orangutan, whatever you want to call it. It's so, it's so intense. And wh one thing I realize also is that the industry around us is, is supporting that. The entertainment industry, it strengthens your mind. It strengthens your monkey mind. So just sitting 30 minutes a day, Swamiji says, like in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna states that... Uh, uh, you practice this a little bit, you'll have huge benefits. We don't realize the benefits because we're like, oh, 30 minutes. We, we see it in a very, perhaps too logical way or too, too uh, yeah, too logical way. But we don't understand the impact that 30 minutes of unclutching will have on you. You do not understand unless you start to live it. And the more you start to live it, the more you start to, uh, to experience it. So uh, definitely. 30 minutes of unclutching a day um, is more than enough. That's what Swamiji said. And and then the more that happens, then you start to unclutch uh, when you engage with people and with life. So, so it's important. So it's important. You can sit a few moments in the space of unclutching. Not engaging with thoughts and emotions, not creating them, not destroying them, just being unclutched, fulfilled, complete. Yes. One of the other things I can add regarding Earlier I was talking about love and uh, how to, when you do puja, you create love. Swamiji uh, shared recently that whatever you do uh, during the day, offer it to your Atmalinga first. So the Atmalinga is, uh, is uh, you, you get it after being initiated into uh, Shiva Diksha. And he was saying before you offer food, offer food to the Atmalinga. Before you go to sleep, put the Atmalinga to sleep. Before you Take a shower, give a small shower to the Atmalinga. Before you brush your teeth, give a little bit of Haritaki to the Atmalinga. Before you wake up, after you wake up, I should say, after you wake up, you wake up the Atmalinga. So if you constantly cherish this love, this caring uh, with the Atmalinga, you consciously create and awaken the space of love within yourself. That's the click I got. And um, it's such a, and it, it, I mean, it's always with you. It's always with you. Atmalinga is always with you. So, so there you will always be able to cherish this feeling connection. Whenever we feel empty emotionally because of relationships or whatever, it's all about strengthening the feeling connection. Okay, maybe uh, we were getting some kind of emotional fulfillment through a certain relationship, but that relationship has now ended. Um, that's not the end of the world. What's important is that I, I, you know you need to get that fulfillment that emotional fulfillment and the best way to get that emotional fulfillment is with guru with the master 
because an enlightened being gives pure love. He gives the love that we need, not the love. Uh, because wh when we when we are in between us in relationships, we are give a certain type of love, we receive a certain type of love, but the love we give is not necessarily the love that the being wants to receive in front of us. But the Guru, the enlightened being, and if you're lucky, the avatar, like in our case, he gives the love you seek deep down, not uh, not another type of love. So that is why it is so fulfilling. So cherishing feeling connection, cherishing love, and uh, building this conscious, loving, feeling connecting, feeling connected relationship, so important. We have another question here. Uh, Nityanandam, I've been practicing the opening and closing mantras. Much appreciated video. Yes, there's a video on, again on Nityanda Media House in Kailash. Link is in the description of this live video. You can check it out. You can uh, you can type opening and closing mantras. Basically, the Sadguru Vandanam and the Purna Mantra are there, and you have the audio and you have the text and all that. And they're very um, yeah, they're very useful because this is this is how you create a space. Sadguru Vandanam means you invoke the presence of the Guru. So after you chant the Sadguru Vandanam, the space is energized with Guru's grace. And when you close the space, whatever you're doing, uh, for instance, these sessions, Purna Mantra means we remember that everything is completion and that nothing can happen outside of completion. And, uh, and then like that, we close the space and we move on to the next activity. So these mantras are very important to energize the space. Mantras have their own powers on their own uh, because of where they come from and all that. So. yes so yes these mantras you can have a look actually uh into the media house they help a lot thank you for answering the previous question another practical question how to avoid sleeping when unclutching yes sleeping is the biggest blind spot of doing unclutching swamji was sharing recently even in the short video i shared earlier uh he was saying tiredness laziness and boredom are mental activities and when you unclutch, you should not engage with any of them. But when tiredness kicks in, uh, it is, it is especially initially, it is, I mean, when tiredness kicks in, it can be difficult to uh, unclutch from that because we are so clutched to the sleeping pattern that uh, we, need a, we need to find ways actually. Um, that's a good question. One thing I did at some point during my unclutching is uh, Swamji says actually you can unclutch eyes open also and um, that can help but it depends of what happens around you. If there's too much movement then your eyes are gonna get attracted by too many things and you won't be able to unclutch. Um, there's two things I can share. First thing is, uh, if you practice unclutching 20 to 30 minutes a day, do it on an empty stomach. So doing unclutching on a stomach full is like, uh, is like strategizing to fall asleep. So that's the first thing. So that can, that can remove a lot of uh, space for the sleep pattern to kick in. Another thing is conscious decision and awareness. This is one of the things that Swamji made me realize and that I constantly w remember and, and implement in what I do. If you see that you're stuck in a pattern, if you see that there's a pattern in which you're stuck and that pattern is not aligned to what you want to manifest in your life. So you have to work on that pattern and break it in order to continue to move forward with uh, your life. Before you start unclutching, Declare to yourself, okay, I'm going to be very much aware. If tiredness, the moment I start to feel tired, I'll be ferocious with myself and I will burn this tiredness through the fire of ferociousness. You, you just consciously create a space where you will remain, you will, you you visualize yourself being successful 
in what you're going to do and perhaps putting more awareness on certain things that you know might slip in such as the tiredness pattern and might interfere with what you want to do so if you are if you are aware and you break it then you'll be cherishing the space of unclutching and at some point these you, you will you will again have a more and more solid experience of what is ferociousness because end of the day each pattern gets broken because of ferociousness swamiji everything that he does is initiating us so that he's infusing his ferociousness in us and the more we realize that ferociousness the more we can simply discard patterns from our lives and start to experience that eternal bliss which is our nature so um, that's a good question but should be aware like for instance one thing I personally have realized is if you fall asleep without deciding to fall asleep waking up in the morning especially at 4 a.m. becomes much more difficult but when you when you go to rest and you rest the body and say okay now I'm going to rest I'm putting the body to rest tomorrow 4 a.m. at Brahma Murta I am going to be woken up by the alarm or by someone at that time I have to get out of bed no matter what I feel no matter, no matter what happens this is my conscious decision I am going to get out of bed you consciously create you hold the space for yourself and then you will see that when you do that you will start to be more and more powerful and you will start to break these patterns and uh, it doesn't take too many times actually when you break that when you do this and you break that patterns three four five times you you the pattern is broken and then you start to experience a different reality your feelings emotions or tiredness or body will no longer come in the way of you uh, manifesting the reality you seek maybe it might take a little bit more time depends of how detoxed your body is but uh, but this this conscious creation is so important so important that that's one of the major thing I got the Swamiji is teaching us the science of enlightenment of living enlightenment he's not uh, he's, tied, he's he's bringing everything down to a science which is reproducible for everybody it is enlightenment should not be an accident who just that just lands on you and you don't know how you got it but somehow you got it that's not the purpose of Swamiji's mission Swamiji's mission is all about reviving the science of living enlightenment so that people can consciously manifest their enlightenment and the frequency of humanity can raise and the purpose of human beings can be fulfilled yes just reading some other questions Yeah, that's a good question um, sometimes I get stuck in a dream sleep I try to wake up multiple times but still find myself in that dream how to unclutch from that yes when we come back from the dream state which is complete unconsciousness um, we can get stuck in the dream state like you cherish some things but body is not following or like body is moving but you're not following mind is not following so you get stuck into this uh, half sleeping half dreaming state and you need to come back to the space of being awake and one of the techniques Swamji recently shared that his uh, yoga guru uh, initiated him into was a very simple thing when you go to rest put a wet towel on your belly or an ice pack I personally use a small ice pack you put a cloth just to make sure that the ice pack does not burn your skin you put a small cloth depending on you check the the how thick it is depending on your sensitivity and how your skin responds but uh, you keep this area cool when the area is cool um, actually to, 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 to facilitate and to break the sleep patterns this is a very powerful technique Swamji shared and uh, I've been practicing it since Swamji has shared and it's amazing um, it reduces the heat in your guts and your stomach area and that's very important to have a, a better sleep and to be more conscious when you sleep Swamji says to experience the space of Turiya when you when the body is at rest when the when the belly is too active when there's too much heat in the guts and in the stomach um, it disturbs the process of experiencing Turiya and to actually act rest 
uh, put the body at rest. So one of the other things Sonji was saying is that do not consume solid food after sunset. Because after sunset, the fire energy, the digestive fire inside of your guts and stomach is reduced and it does not consume food properly, which makes the digestion of food much longer and it keeps your entire internal organs active when they should be resting. So when you sleep, you sleep, but your internal organs are functioning. So that, that, that creates bad sleep. And uh, we have a hard time waking up in the morning and even if we sleep 10 hours, we still feel tired or eight hours and all that. So all these things can be, these patterns can be broken by these two, two small techniques, yogic techniques. And we can reclaim the, the, um, the powers of the body because the body actually only needs like two hours of rest, but it needs to be deep sleep. But we don't know how to get into deep sleep because we have uh, negative lifestyle habits and powerless cognitions. So these two things go hand in hand, actually they're directly related and toxins in the body. So all these three are intertwined and working with each other. So when you have powerful cognitions, your lifestyle will change, your detox will be higher. When you do detox, you'll have more powerful cognitions and your lifestyle will change. When you change your lifestyle, you'll have different types of cognitions and you'll have, you'll have detox. So they all work together. So whatever you feel more comfortable with, uh, if you can do all three, obviously that is the best. Otherwise, whatever uh, I, uh, the direction in which you choose is uh, whatever you feel more connected to. But uh, but rest is very important, and for that we need to understand how the body functions and how the states of consciousness consciousness functions. So one thing that is clear is that when there is activity, digestive activity, when you rest, you will not be able to rest properly and and you will start to dream you'll get agitated you'll go into deep sleep for 10 minutes and then you'll come back to dream uh, dream that you forget not the dreams you remember then you come to the dreams where you can remember then you go back there then you go and we go back and forth like this so within eight hours of rest we actually rested like 35 minutes so whereas a yogi who puts his body to rest he sleeps his body rests for two hours but he gets like Two hours of rest so that's totally different so it's not about the amount of time you sleep it's about how many how much time you spend in deep sleep and for that you will not know obviously because you're in deep sleep and you do not we do not have the awareness to identify what is deep sleep what is not deep sleep uh, because again there's a layer where there are some dreams where we don't remember so if you don't remember you don't know if you were in deep sleep or you were dreaming but all these techniques of having like wet cloths or ice packs on the belly, uh, reducing solid food as a, in general, or especially after sunset, dropping solid food, taking, you know, haritaki, castor oil, neem juice, all these things will stimulate the internal organs and it will restore the health of the internal organs and give you your power to reach or to go into um, deep sleep properly. So yes, yes, whenever I get stuck in a deep sleep, in a, in a dream state, I chant the Guru Vandanam and it helps a lot. Yes, so obviously remembering, uh, Swamiji says the highest fuel you can energize your body with is sweet remembrance. Uh, and especially the sweetest, the most pure experience of sweetness is with guru because an enlightened being or an avatar does not have any vested interests so naturally the space which is cherished is pure whereas um, the sweetness we experience with other beings which are not in the space of fulfillment of eternal bliss then that sweetness is layered with uh, incomplete desires so yes So let us sit a few moments in the space of unclutching, 40 seconds, uh, I'll play the video of Swamiji. Decide to unclutch, not to follow any thoughts, emotions, triggering of mind and mental activities inside. Even laziness is a mental activity. Tiredness is mental activity. Feeling bored is mental activity. Do not follow any of that. 
just decide not to follow any mental activity and sit as you the pure space yes so we'll close the session for today thank you for joining so at a similar time on a daily basis i have these sessions so if you have if you face anything during the day and you wish to have perhaps a different perspective you can come and share your questions i'll be gladly share whatever uh, cognitions i have regarding the topic whatever cognitions i got from swamiji's initiations and um, and uh, and yes and experience a little bit of unclutching remembering the importance of unclutching so thank you again for watching today and i'll see you in the next session we will close with the purna mantra Om Purnamadah Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadhaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Sarvam Bhagavat Shri Nityananda Paramashivam Padukarpa Namastu Om Nityanandam